This lesson walks through some basic tools for troubleshooting IP. I've already shown a number of these in previous lessons. The first one we generally will use is ipconfig. This shows me the basic information about my IP configuration, my IP address, my subnet mask, my default gateway. If I do ipconfig slash all, it shows me additional information. It shows me, for example, the name of my adapter, my MAC address, if I'm using DHCP, what my DHCP server actually was. If I'm using NetBIOS over TCP IP, when my lease was obtained, when it expires. So just additional information to help me understand my current IP configuration. I can do the same thing in PowerShell. I can do get net adapter to see my network adapters. I can then do get net IP address to see the IP addresses of the adapters on my machine. I can be more specific. I could say get net IP address for an interface alias, i.e. Ethernet. And I could also say only show me information for IP address family IPv4. So it's giving me that similar information to ipconfig. Now with ipconfig, I could also do things like release, release my DHCP address. I could say renew. I want you to renew the lease. I can say things like register DNS, register my IP to host name record with the DNS servers. Once again, with PowerShell, for example, the register DNS is actually a specific command lit. I can say register DNS client. The next useful tool is ping. Ping enables me to check, do I have communication to another machine? Savdal DC01. And it tries it four times. I can see it sent 32 bytes each time and it came back in less than one millisecond. So yes, I have the connectivity. Now the server or machine, it could be a desktop that I'm pinging, has to have ICMP enabled. This does not use TCP or UDP. ICMP sits next to TCP and UDP, it's layer four. It is IP protocol number one. If I go into my firewall, I actually want the firewall of advanced security. If I look at my inbound rules and scroll down to the file and printer sharing, you'll see echo request. And there are ones for IPv4 and ones for IPv6. So I've enabled these so machines could ping me. And there's the profiles. One is if I'm on a private network, one is if I'm on a domain network. So the machine you're trying to ping must have these enabled or it will not work. So just because you cannot ping something doesn't mean you can't get to it. It may just mean it doesn't have that rule enabled. For example, machines on the internet often have that turned off because pinging a machine can be a form of denial of service. If I keep pinging a machine from many different machines, I'll clog up its networking stack and render it unusable. So often internet-based services will disable that. But for machines on my local network, it's a useful tool. And certainly if I can ping it, it guarantees, yes, I do have that connectivity. There are various other parameters. If I do a ping dash question mark, I can see I can do a continual ping. I can test the resolution of addresses to host names, a number to send, the size of the buffer to send. If I want to avoid fragmentation in the packet, times to live, I can actually specify different ports, for example, I want to send to. So many different ways I can actually use this. I can force IPv4 versus IPv6, for example. I can do the same thing in PowerShell. I can do test connection and specify the target. And it's doing that same 32 byte test four times. There's also a combination on the command prompt side. There's something called path ping. This will show me, well, how did I get to a certain destination and show me that connectivity to each of them. You can see it will do it up to 30 different hops to get to that particular target. And then I'm not gonna let that run. I can just stop that. The next useful command is traceroute. I showed this in an earlier lesson. This shows me, well, what exactly are the hops to get to a certain target? If I try something on my local network, it's just one hop, I can talk to it directly. If I was trying to get sync on a different network, then there would be a different number of hops. It would show me the detail for each one of them. Likewise, in PowerShell, I could do the test net connection. And I can say traceroute, to whatever that target is. In this case, I can get to it directly. 
The ARP command is very useful to check the ARP cache. Remember, if maybe I have invalid entries, I can do an ARP D asterisk or wildcard to delete them all. Maybe I have a bad entry that's stopping my communication, and then it will rediscover the various MAC to IP addresses it needs to do its job. Another very useful tool is the Microsoft Message Analyzer. Now, here I've already installed it. This is a download from Microsoft. I'm going to right click. I'm going to run it as administrator. I have to run it as administrator if I want to do a local capture of packets. This is going to capture anything. So I can say start local trace. It's now going to start capturing everything on my machine. So it's just capturing all that data. I could say ns lookup sav dal dco1, ns lookup sav dal mps01. Doesn't exist, that's erroring. So we try something else, IIS01, ISO2, just sending some traffic out. Once that's done, a few module errors there, I can then stop the capture. I could have applied a filter to this, so I would only capture certain types of traffic. I can also filter post capture. So there's a library of different filters available. I can search for certain IP addresses, certain types of traffic, search for strings within the data. I can also just type in a certain protocol. So I can just type in DNS and I can say apply. That will only show me the packets that are DNS operations. There's me looking up IISO1, ISO2, NPS. So you can see it's sending those requests over the network to those various destinations. So this is a very useful tool if maybe I'm having trouble with connectivity, I'm trying to understand how a certain behavior is occurring. If I scan the network, I can see all of those packets and that might help me troubleshoot. Once I have these packets, it's showing me the responses to that various communications. So there is my request and it's showing me there's my response. I can actually go and expand that out to see the detail of exactly what it sent me. It sent me the actual data, the record data. So it's a very powerful tool. It formats it very nicely, a great way to actually go and investigate what's happening on the network. So that's the Microsoft Message Analyzer, a free download from Microsoft.